I am not going to sing because I can't sing. Honestly, it's terrible when I sing, so I, I am not even going to try. However, I do have a new microphone, so let's get started. Hey guys, it's Matt and today we're going to talk about audio, especially if you're looking for audio to use at your desktop computer or laptop. In the past, I already covered one of the tonal microphones in this video there. Oh. Uh, it was okay, but it had a couple of quirks that I didn't particularly like. So when they reached out and asked me to review another one, I thought like, it might be a good idea to give them a second chance and see if the new microphone, the Tonor TC30, is better. So after a couple of days I received this massive box with this microphone inside. Alright, there was a stand and a pop filter in it as well, but I couldn't help the impression that the box was l rather large. Just as before, TC30 is a USB microphone, which means you're gonna need a computer to take advantage of it. And this is a condenser microphone with cardioid pickup button. It's an excellent choice if you're looking for something that's gonna capture that deep voice for voiceovers and videos, or maybe for streaming. So I'm going to examine all of those in this video. For now, let's focus on what we're getting in the box. You get that cheapo stand, which is okay, but you're probably gonna quickly upgrade to something better. Now, the cage itself, it's all right. It still uses those rubber bands to kind of keep the microphone in place. And since the microphone is very smooth on each side, at first I thought it might be sliding out, but no, it sits firmly and I'm happy with it. I like the previous uh, Tonor microphone, this one actually has a USB Type-C port, which means you can detach the cable and it makes it easier for storage. It also makes it easier to manage your cables, which is something I really appreciate because if you're gonna put the microphone somewhere on your desk, it's gonna be probably a permanent installation and you want to cable manage this thing. Now, it's obviously easier to make the cable shorter, but if it's a length that you're gonna need, then it's nice to have an option to replace the default cable that comes with it. Inside the box you'll also find a pop filter, which slides nicely onto the cage and sits in place. I guess that's pretty much everything that I can tell you about this microphone without getting it plugged in. Perhaps I should mention that it costs around £31 on Amazon and I'm gonna link it in the description of the video. So without further ado, let's uh, revisit the most popular use cases scenarios for this type of microphone. And we're going to start with podcasting. Hello everyone, this is Not Enough Podcasts and it's your host Matt and today we're going to talk about Zigbee. And what's so great about Zigbee? Absolutely everything and nothing because, well, I've got far too many Zigbee devices and my mesh is underdeveloped. So you we are probably in the same circumstances. You're looking for the answers, I'm looking for the answers and absolutely no one has any answers. In the next episode, I promise, we're gonna find some answers for you. Well, the microphone is definitely good for podcasting, I don't think I'll be starting any podcast soon. I mean, things might change, but who knows? The next up, and something that I do quite often, are voiceovers on the maker's video. So, I made a sample for you as well. And this is a project I've been working for a while now. As you can see, it has a Raspberry Pi Pico at heart, connected to the small, a 0 0.1, no, 0 0.91 OLED display and some contactor and it's powered by a battery. Now, this is exciting little project that I've 3D printed and this is a prototype, so I hope to share a little bit more details soon. And this is how I usually use the tonal microphone to capture my voice, whether I'm doing a voiceover for something at a table or actually capturing the screen on the computer using the mic for voiceover uh, from Node-RED or similar tutorials. But this is obviously not the only way to make money on YouTube and I quickly realized that if I ever switched over to ASMR, which means making silly sounds to microphones, you can get so much more views than my channel. Honestly, just look them up, they're insane. So I had a quick crack at it and I decided to make a Makers ASMR, <laughs> and I'm laughing already because it was ridiculous. Imagine driving screws one by one. First slowly, then faster, until the screw is all the way in. 
and your project is almost done and your 3D printing project is almost complete. However, those tiny imperfections need to be cleaned. But by far one of the most popular use cases for microphone this type is streaming games. And there are lots of streamers out there that's gonna stream their game while they're playing and have a dedicated microphone like this to, well, stream the content and improve the voice quality. And when it comes to voice quality, it matters a lot. So let's give it a go and see how badly can I do. All right, this is Dying Light and I'm not a gaming streamer person. I do play games from time to time on my second channel, which is uh, Tech After Hours. But I I am really bad at focusing on one or two things. Well, I can do one thing, not two things at the same time. Uh, let's go and uh, let's seek carnage. That uh, looks like yeah. a zombie in there. We're going to have a fun with uh, him or with all of them. Hello, baby. Oh, nice. It's all about the crowd control, baby. And I, and I know how to control my cloud. Oh, maybe not now. Come on. Oh, someone's helping me. Ouch! That was painful. Whoa! Look at that, this guy is not getting up. Wow. Okay, I think he's dead. Cheers, Paul. Dope. Nice, okay. Anyone else? No, we're good. Oh! Come on. Okay, that's gonna be tough. And I'm dead. I think we all can agree that I'm not going to be a gaming streamer anytime soon. But what I can tell you is that it's actually a pretty decent microphone. What I really like about it, comparing to the previous one, that is so much more sensitive, giving me the scale I need to record the voiceovers and different sounds. In the Windows sound options, I was setting it at about 50 to 80 percent, depending on the use cases, to get the optimal sound levels for the recording. And I was quite happy with it because it gives me the range I need to record different voiceovers and accommodate different scenarios. So if you are looking for a microphone and you want something on your desk to capture your voice and produce slightly better quality, even if it's just for Zoom calls and for work, then yeah, it's actually not a bad choice. So take a look at the description, you'll find the links to this one. And I hope you enjoy my little experiment with different genres on YouTube. Let's, let's not do this again. Okay guys, if you're curious what's gonna be in the next video, then well, you know how it works, how YouTube works. Use the tools provided, subscribe and all of that. But I would give you a hint, follow me on any given social media to get access to uh, content early and engage in the conversation because this is the best way to get snippets of my work. As for now, thanks so much for watching and I'm definitely gonna see you in the next video. And now I'm off to karaoke.